Hey everybody, welcome to Let Me Know How It Is, a podcast about all things geek. The great reboot debate is on deck today where we try and figure out just how necessary they are. Please enjoy, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode. Okay. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. We're going to talk all things reboot for this one. Uh, what do we like about them? What do we don't like? Are they necessary? So we're going to get into it. With that, I'm Zach Slater. I'm Frank Melman. This is Tommy Smithereens. I'm Clifton. So reboots. What do we think about reboots? How do we feel about them? I hate them. I know you do. Uh, <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know you don't, but it's it never pans out to what they wanted to be originally. I know there's a history of reboots of several characters to... Um, the early 2000s or the early 20th century in which you get, whether it's Zorro or Scarlet Pimpernel or whatever the <laughs> hell his name is. I like Daffy's version of it, but oh my God, it's so <laughs> draining because they try to bring back something that was captured for that moment, for that time. And unless you understand the nuances of the character, it can be successful. Understanding that is to me a reboot is something like 66 Batman to 89 Batman, in which I have to concede that reboot because it's nothing like 66 Batman, but it's still Batman. It is more than you think. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, fine, fine. But, but, it, 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 but you'd have to examine it under a fine ma- uh, magnifying glass in order to get them. Wow. <laughs> you know, but, you know, from my understanding, that's what I'm conceding for. But for me, I grew up during the 80s in which a vast amount of the stuff that I love. Damn it. I'm thinking G.I. Joe was an okay. effing reboot, wasn't it? It was. Mm-hmm. It was. Yes. <laughs> this is what I, I feel like that there's going to be more than you're aware of that you're going to actually like. I've got a list. But uh, Clifton, before you go into your list, should I uh, put my foot in my mouth now? <laughs> or do you want to relieve me of that before um, I bring up another title? You can go ahead. Bring up okay. another title. All right, yeah, okay. I'm going to be hating this episode just for some mm. fact that I have no understanding of what a reboot is. <laughs> but uh, when I grew up in the 80s, I felt there was a lot more property that, or at least creative ideas that surfaced as a result of um, the diversity of cartoons specifically. Let's say, whether it be Turtles, I've never seen anything like that before. Thundercats, never seen anything like that before. Transformers, never seen anything like that before. He-Man. Never saw anything like that before. But it was back to back to back to back. Even something as as simple as effing baby versions of a character. To me, it felt new. But one of my, I, I, one I of get, my favorites. <laughs> yes. But again, it was ideas and properties that were introduced in such a nuanced way that I felt they were original. Again, uh, maybe because I was so young that I had nothing to compare it to at that particular time because it was new to me. But now that I'm older and I see these damn reboots of stuff that I that are just trendy um, examples of what I grew up on, hard pass because it feels like there's so many other properties or ideas or hell, even books that they can draw from in which they can make uh, new production examples of. Like for example, I even say Game of Thrones. The book's been out there since when, late 80s or early 90s? But the way they've, they've thrown themselves into the production value of it, it has become new. I don't think of that as rebook. Same with... Um, it's not a reboot. It's okay, an adaptation. But, yeah, but yeah, I'd rather see an adaptation as opposed to a uh, reboot, only because there's so many different things that are out there that can be mined for. It. Okay. Cliff, what do you think? It is kind of tricky as to what is a reboot what is a remake there's a lot of overlap the gi joe was the toy line was a reboot of the earlier like 12 inch figure toy line but it was the first time that a animated series was made of it i'd argue the gi joe the 80s version was a more of a legacy a legacy character as opposed to being an actual reboot just because the fact that they're trading on the name almost like the uh julie schwartz using the green lantern and flash and and the Atom and those characters from the Golden Age and rebooting them or re- turning them into legacy characters while using the same name. But are we to think that legacy characters aren't reboots? I would say they are. Yeah. I would I think say so. They are. I so, would. Yeah. Is, okay, my question becomes, then is Jay Garrick, or is Barry Allen a reboot of Jay Garrick? So one of the points that I'm making, so I think for me, 
like with most of the things, uh, it depends. Some are good. <laughs> some reboots are good. Right. Some are not. But there's the concept of the soft reboot, which I classify as we're going to keep some bits of continuity in place, but it is a different take of the character. So I think soft reboots keep some things of continuity intact. Whereas hard reboot acts as if none of that stuff happened again. And I'm just repackaging the same idea for you with either a different cast or some other icing on the cake to make it appear new. Right. So J.J. Abrams' Star Trek 2009 is a perfect example of a soft reboot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that it keeps the continuity of the original Star Trek while bringing in newer, younger, hipper actors to just relaunch it again and make it something new. Right. Is history showing that as a terrible idea? Because they're finding trouble to utilize that soft reboot in order to make more compelling stories as a result of Well, it. the first one was a really good. I mean, I think the first one worked really well. I think the second one worked terribly. I think the biggest issue with a lot of reboots is the fact that they trade a nostalgia of a name or a character, and they don't realize that, well, yeah, I, I recognize that name. I recognize that character. Doesn't mean I want to spend $12 to see or $15 to see what your... Yeah, I mean, I think you fall into the trap, too, because it is a nostalgic thing that you then, in some case, like with Into Darkness, which we will spoil Into Darkness for you, you're just, re it, it, it gets to a point where you're just retelling aspects of the same story mm -hmm. and you're hitting the same notes. Please repeat your statement of a soft reboot real quick, then I'll say my example, my point. So, I mean, I, it's not an exact definition, but I think a soft reboot retains some semblance of what happened before that. Okay. Right. So I'm going to say the Silver Age stuff acts as kind of both, though, because it is a hard reboot in the sense that this is a different character. Hal Jordan's a different character than Alan Scott. Right. But Alan Scott happened. Right. He well, exists. But no, but point being is what you're discussed with the soft reboot almost felt is switched with Star Trek one. I'm mean, Star Trek Beyond and um, Star Trek to what was it called? No, Into Darkness. Yeah. The reason why I say yeah. that because Into the Darkness is a retelling. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. different while, without, without doing the work. Yeah, but Beyond is almost a new story in itself, just reutilizing characters. To me, it felt Beyond felt newer than Into the Darkness. Mm -hmm. Into right. the Darkness was a to me more of a soft reboot because they didn't need it. They should have used an original story instead of just beats of an old of two stories in a weird amalgamation of it. Whereas beyond the first one, it changed the universe as a whole. Like mm -hmm. you have the destruction of Vulcan. Right. Which that's never happened. No. Right. And and you have two Spocks in the same area. Right. That's never happened right. either. But if you look at Into the Darkness, everything has occurred. All of it. It's it's to me, it's that's what makes it terrible. Yeah, I mean, it it's whatever mood yeah. you catch me in. I, I I go back and forth and into darkness. I, I do think that it is an immense, at times, an immense waste of time because it is just <laughs> telling us exactly what we already know. And I think that that's my case of, of when reboots don't work is when you're taking something nostalgic, but you can't contribute anything new to it and you're just recycling the same thing. Well, they did contribute the magic blood at the end. Right. That basically says from that point on, you know, anyone who's dying or dead could basically be brought back with this magic blood, which again... Stupid plot point. Sure, just dumb. But sure. again, it's, it's short sighted. Sure, yeah. but I mean, but but the, but I, I agree. My biggest thing about it is is into darkness is the problem with it. It was again, you're not willing to do the. You're not laying the foundation. You're not laying the groundwork. You're just realizing that people know the meme of Khan, right? Or anything else, or may have actually seen the episodes when they aired, or in, in repeat or whatever. But you still want to trade upon the idea that, well, Khan and Kirk are a big deal, so therefore people are going to want to come see yeah. this movie. Even though they didn't want to come out and say that Cumberbatch was being Khan. I'm, I'm going to refine this definition of a soft reboot because I am thinking in my head of instances where things are going to be both. And okay. everything. So, okay. and, and I do feel like it is problematic what I'm saying. So I'm going to, I'm going to pull out uh, shelving into darkness. I'm going to pull out Next Generation for a second. Next Generation to me is a hard reboot, right? None of the same characters. It's not Kirk again. It's not Spock, right? Completely new cast, completely new enterprise, completely, right? But mm -hmm. the, but under my definition, it is a semblance of a soft reboot in that original series happened. Right. And that's part of it, mm -hmm. right? 
But I think, I think of it this way. So, like, let, let's imagine, spoiler for Endgame, let's imagine Tony Stark doesn't die in Endgame, right? right. Let's, ima- let's say that Robert Downey's contract ran out and he was not going to play Iron Man anymore and they recasted Iron Man, right? Sure. But they're not going to say, so if they did an Iron Man 4 with somebody else playing Iron Man, but they're not going to say that the first three didn't happen, right? Right. It's, that's going to be a soft reboot, right? The guy's just picking up where... Downey left off. If this happened, it's not. It's never going to happen. But you know I what I mean. Consider that a reboot because that's just what happened to the Batman when Val Kilmer took over. That's just a sequel. Like mm. people used to change wow. roles it all is. the time. Like it Bond. Is, but I mean, but, <laughs> like James but, Bond. But, but wouldn't you say though that Batman Forever has a different identity from the other two? I mean, it's a different writer director, but it's still like it's, it's, the same. it's not. I wouldn't it's just the next one. It's just, you could, I mean, you yeah. could argue technically. You could argue that that one is drawn by Neil Adams, the next one is drawn by Jim Aparo. <laughs> Because they just don't right. look, they don't look that Bruce, Bruce Wayne doesn't look the same from from movie to movie. I would consider those it, on some level, right? I think every time a new creative team jumps onto something, it is kind mm-hmm. of a reboot of sorts, right? Even though it may, it, even though it's you can be playing off of what happened previously in the arc. But do you see that with the 007 movies? You think every time a new bond is formed, it's a reboot? Uh, that 007 is a weird one, right? <laughs> 007 is a super weird because uh, but a the, lot the of- sense is, is that like they're all kind of standalone, but they're all kind of not. Yeah. And it's almost like you you, you almost tr- tracking the actor is, is where you can find this is a reboot. This is not, but I don't know. I mean, like 007 is a tough one, yeah. it, right? No, there's a re- that's the reason why I, I no other franchise is like that. Yeah, that's. I think Batman was trying to accomplish that with them trading in actors to make for Val Kilmer for right. George Clooney. Yeah, but to me, the true reboot from excuse me, re- reboot, excuse me, from that is when they do um, begins. Um, yeah, begins. That's sure. the reboot. They tell mm-hmm. us they they retell his origin story, and they place certain people that we never saw before in moving forward with that persona. Yeah. I think we're getting another reboot with uh, Matt Reeves as the Batman. Right. In yeah. which we bring in a younger character that precedes the age of the yeah. ages of the young. And arguably, it already happened with Superman versus Batman. Yes. yes. Yeah, yes. undoubtedly. I, I, those are all hard reboots in my and, and and one of the perfect examples of one where I think they had it right. Nobody wanted to see the follow up to Batman and Robin, right? As much as people, you know, criticize that movie for killing the Bat franchise, and we didn't get any new ones, but we did get a new one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Years later, we sure. got a new one, yeah. Batman Begins, and it's a really good one. Mm-hmm. Reboot was... And not that many years later, when you think about it. No. It was 98 to... 2000. To 2005. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's not a huge amount of time. No, it's not. Not really. It wasn't gone for that long. But I'll throw Superman Returns into that, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Okay. Different actor. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you can't say that it's not a reboot of the franchise it is but there's it's also soft, but it's but it's also a soft one because soft it reboot. acts at least partially like one and two happen it ignores three and four yeah right but it's almost similar to what i guess what amazing spider-man and spider-man mm-hmm. as far as we didn't need it even though it was a reboot of it it, it wasn't acts it wasn't it, it wasn't i mean i guess what they're trying to do is deliver on a new actor right. without having to um segue from this is what he's doing now it gives us fresh take on what we can do with peter as opposed to before but then they did it a third time and it was great yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so is it just because a reboot's needed only if the story's good is that what it depends on the story is that what we're proposing because I think it depends on the take but and have at- you exhausted everything i mean i do amazing spider-man i think people would have preferred a spider-man 4 Right, even though like a Sam Raimi, Tobey yeah, Maguire, they, Spider-Man. yeah, I think yeah. That people would have preferred that over it. But well, let me all right, let me throw one out there that doesn't do back to back where the the original is fresh in your somebody's mind and something new like the Lone Ranger. Mm. Um, that was a <laughs> that was a reboot of it, and it was bad. Mm. <laughs> Question mean, mark? Yeah, it, it's long. It's very long, <laughs> but at no point. You, can you remember the last time you seen the Lone Ranger movie or even the show? When they reached that? Yeah. R- really? Which one was it? 2013. Yeah, the one, Johnny the Depp. Disney one. No, that's the one I'm that's talking about. I know. I know. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Prior to that. Before that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Not really. No, TV show, I guess. Yeah, but that's that's one take on the, on the, on the reboot. 
I, I mean, I have a fondness for that movie, but I think it's just because it's there's scenes in it that I'm like, how is this a Disney movie? That's there's right. like, there's moments in it where I'm like, there's no, they, you know, they they cut a guy's heart out. Yeah, they do. And there's one point where they're mowing down Native Americans with a Gatling gun. Gatling gun. Like in a Disney movie. Again, it's one of those, uh, who, what, how did this get made? I think it came off the heels of um, Pirates of the Caribbean in which um, they thought they can get away with more stuff uh, action wise than mm. they thought they ever could. It wasn't the same director, was yeah. it? Yeah. Rubinsky? Yes. Yes. But again, it's one of those, yeah. it's one of those things of like, again, at that point, like you're. <sighs> Lone Ranger's been around. We said in another episode, we've said Lone Ranger's been Since around. Since 1933? 1933. Yeah, yeah. And again, I'm not, I'm not saying, obviously, five, you know, five years later, Superman's, you know, on the scene. So it's not like you can say that it's a matter of longevity or the character is not necessarily in people's consciousness. But as you said, Tommy, there's, I mean, there's not, there hasn't been, when was the last time you saw the Lone Ranger prior to this? Sure. And it's one of those things where I'm like, I, I can't recall. I mean, he's been in the comics. Lans- Joe Lansdale did, uh, did for Vertigo, did a couple, no, did for, I'm sorry, for Tops. For Tops. Tops. Awesome. For Tops. With, uh, did, uh, with, uh, Tim Truman did some Lone Ranger comics. But beyond that, there wasn't, I don't know if anywhere else that the Lone Ranger was actually. That sounds yet. terrific. You're going to have to loan me those. I will. If you have them. That <laughs> sounds awesome. pretty cool. <laughs> so, I mean, it's one of those where, you know, it's kind of like, I don't really know of another place where you would have seen the Lone Ranger. And I think it's one of those things where a lot of times, yeah, there's nostalgia for a character like the Lone Ranger. And I think people know, like you say the Lone Ranger, most people, again, it's one of those characters. If you said to my mom, hey, you know, what do you know about the Lone Ranger? My mom could probably tell you a fair amount of Lone Ranger and Tonto stuff. But my mom's not going to see, you know, blockbuster movies in the theater. She's not, she may watch it if it's on home. But I think a lot of times when they choose stuff to reboot, they can dip a little too far back and miss the mark on what they think an audience might be. I think that happens a fair amount of times. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that, too. I think, I mean, everybody's shooting for what's going to be the next big thing, right? And and on some level, these are all successful properties at some point. And this has been done, this has been done, this has been done. And so we're just going back to the well. And then, okay, now we found, we're dusting off Green Hornet at right. this point. Or yeah. Whether yeah. or not people are clamoring for it or not. Yes. A funny instance of that is is back at 89 Batman, where 89 Batman was a huge success. And movie studios seem to somehow take the success of Batman to interpret it as audience all of a sudden didn't necessarily want more superheroes, but they wanted 1930s pulp characters. And we got a string of 1930s pulp hero movies in the in the early to mid 90s, right on the heels of Batman, like Rocketeer, Shadow, Phantom. Phantom. Phantom's another I one. Billy Zane. Phantom. Dick Tracy. Dick Tracy, exactly. Yeah, we got like a whole string of these like 1930s pulp. But Rocketeer was created later, but in the style, in the mm-hmm. name of the 1930s pulp heroes. And like, it, it's just an example of they didn't quite see what was resonating with audiences. And, and actually those movies, I grew up on them and I do enjoy them, but they were definitely not the successes that 1989 Batman was. And then even after that, the first foray into superhero movies that we're talking about in like the mid 90s, apart from Batman, were going into the angle of the darkness that people thought was in Batman. And so that's when we got Spawn and Blade and, and Blade and Darkman. And, yeah. <laughs> and, and so they still kind of missed the mark. Yeah, I mean... So, but this is the question about when, when re- sometimes reboots fail because I think that they don't take what people like about the property to begin with and they change it radically, right? Mm-hmm. But I can find instances where that's not true too. Star yeah. Trek The Next Generation, I think, I think is the same in concept, but it, I mean, it adds and contributes a ton to the franchise more. It takes it in a different direction. Battlestar. Right. The, mm-hmm. the, um, what's his name? Sorry. The Rob, uh, Rob Moore, Rob Moore, mm-hmm. Rob Moore Battlestar. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, it doesn't, Ron rese- Moore. Ron Ron Moore. Moore. Ron Moore. it doesn't, doesn't resemble much at all the original. Right. And that, I mean, so sometimes, sometimes having a new take on things is just what the property needs. That is on my list of the good reboots <laughs> yeah. that I made. Yeah. Is, I mean, is there, is there a better one in <laughs> comics than Frank Miller's Daredevil? I'm hard pressed to think of one that that you know is a reboot that that, that has become, in fact, like the take. Well, you can argue to say that um, Miles Morales mm-hmm. is a, a reboot of Peter Parker, at least the Spider-Man franchise, in which it takes very nicely. Same with um, Captain America when you bring in Winter Soldier, it re- 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 reinvigorates the character in such a way that 
it doesn't really change it, but it introduces new concepts and new ideas to it that makes you like it that much more than what you saw previously. And that way, I'm sure you can think about other characters that survive it. Another one is Captain Marvel, in mm-hmm. which people embrace it more now than they ever have for that type of reboot. But again, I think, uh, I believe reboots only are uh, worth noting when you have a fresh take on the subject matter the, or the character in which it embraces today's times. I don't think just bringing it back just to remind you what it is is necessarily enough to sustain a reboot. Like for the examples that he said earlier that failed, uh, what, what um, Clifton said earlier, I think all those failed because it was almost like, hey, remember this? This is how it was in the day. And then you're giving me just a, a, a nuanced production of something that was produced in 1930 or 40. I believe it has to be more than just a um, re- uh, retelling, but a reimagining of how it would interact with today's society in which it's created. I mean, you could almost say that Blade is a reboot because the character that they introduce in the movie isn't anything close to what was resembles in the comic books. And it almost used it. I mean, hell, the intro. I love that intro. But the uh, the whole um, warehouse club parties that were taking place during that time. Oh, with like the blood sprinklers? Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> you know, it was... It's an interesting take on vampires. Um, I think it, uh, I think it spearheaded a lot of things different with vampires. I made people want to dip their toe to change it to something more nuanced. I'm sure a lot of other franchises benefited from that reimagining. I think a reboot has to be more than just a reintroduction of the character, but a, a, a nuanced way that you would show how it would be presented now. And when it falls on something of that nature, it stinks. It's garbage. I mean, <sighs> Hell, what's the Superman Returns? It's just mm. a retelling of um, Donner's Superman, is it not? Or is it? Am I saying that? I mean, it's an extension, and it, it plays with some of the stuff. You know, some of the ideas of you know how that stuff was back in what seventy eight ish. Yeah, around that time. I mean, it, it kind of does, but I agree. It's one of those things where I don't think they should have just started fresh. They shouldn't have really tied together because yes. a lot of people didn't care for the idea of Superman being a deadbeat dad and taking off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. I say, th- I think, th- I think that was a. They didn't. I think that that was an instance of of a reboot that didn't stray far enough. It's true. Right. It, it it stuck. It stuck too much to a particular version. Right. Man of Steel is a reboot that I hate because it changes the fundamentals of the property. Right. But but Superman Returns it came out at a time where Richard Donner take had almost like a stranglehold on the character where like people only saw it as this. I would have accepted Man of Steel if not for the ending. I like how the Kryptonians use world changing machines Mm -hmm. on that level because they introduce something on a higher threat level than what's capable of doing. Not to say that I'm I'm a proponent of this movie. It's just that there's some (laughs) some ideas. Make no mistake. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. there's some ideas except for the last 15 minutes of the movie that I was able to swallow as a result of it. Like, I love the Krypton stuff just because it made me feel like Krypton was of a different world. And it and it, it just, I love the embrace of a different world in which it took you to that world, you know? That was fine with me. But God, ugh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't want to step on what you're saying, but yeah, it's one of those, th- like... yes. I'm not taking the bait. We're not, no. I don't want to talk about Man of Steel. Yeah, we're gonna... no, we can talk. Yeah, <laughs> we can do a whole show. And, yeah, yeah, we're going to do a whole episode. I, I, of for yeah, me, it's, it's, I think it's a matter of, I think with a lot of times, with, like we were talking about, you mentioned the stuff in the, in the comics, Tommy, and I think for me, I you know, I tend to gravitate more to the idea of legacy. Like if you're going to use the name of a character to trade on nostalgia, and then you're going to give me something that's completely different, I'm all for that. Like I think it's a good idea. Like, like Ms. Marvel, like Kamala Khan, by far one of the best legacy characters that's come out in the last what how long has that character been around now five years five years ten years years. i mean we're talking you know the last five to ten years i think that character was really well done and i think it's one of the better when you're pointing to something that's like a a a legacy character or a reboot or whatever you're you're trying to uh, because again i think it's more of a legacy because again isn't so much a reboot of hey we're telling carol danvers story again we're telling kamala khan's story she just happens to be miss marvel Right. You know, I think that works works really well, and I think much the way that I think that Miles Morales worked really well, and even more with the fact that like Jane Foster Thor, I thought was another good you know legacy, even though it's not necessarily Thor Odin's son. Yeah, you know, 
I'm with you. I mean, I'm not will- willing to say blanket statement that I'll take it in every instance. Mm-hmm. Those are instances that I think where it worked. Right. And they're really good. But, you know, Transformers, the Michael Bay Transformers, I'll leave that all day. Sure. You know, I don't want that. Not, not that Transformers from 84 is to kill a mockingbird or anything like that. <laughs> but I think it's I, I think it's unquestionably a better it's definitely take. It's more. I mean, there's nostalgia playing in on this. But speaking on Transformers, did any of you guys see Beast Wars? No. I saw pieces of Beast Wars well, over the years. Yeah, well, <laughs> needless to say, I love that as a reboot because it it embraced the past of it while introducing something altogether new. I wish they'd reimagined that based because it was a uh, CGI or at least a computer generated cartoon. Mainframe up in Canada, I think. Yes, made it. yes. What was your? I mean, so when did you start it though? I mean, did did you reject it initially? Like, what is this? They're ma- Optimus no. Prime's an ape, like, what, like, because that's what that's why I didn't watch it. No, but uh, that's I mean that's why I got from the name Beast Wars. I mean, mm-hmm. it just it just the, the channel introduced it to it. No, that I, wasn't. I got that too. But yeah. I mean, but for me, at he the was time, sold on the concept. But for me at the time, it was also like it, it, it was like I just I just want that. Just make more make more of the other thing. No, I, I get that, but you it, know? it with and now and that was what made it appealing was it it brought in the other thing. Right. Um, by the third season, it shows you that it was more of a, a legacy character. It was introduced as Prime was a descendant of Optimus Prime. Right. But through, um, you know how technology evolves over time. Yeah. If, if, we're, if we're gonna look at it that way, they were, generation one was all they could do was transform into cars. But now you have what, three generations or four generations in, and you can technology, now they can transform into beasts. Sure. No, I mean, I'm not belittling the show. Like I've heard, I've heard the show is very, very good. And I, you know, and, and I'm not saying it's a terrible show or anything. I'm just saying so, but your expectation was from the get go. Like you went freely yes. to that version. Yes. You, know, you didn't have to be convinced at all. You were like, okay, I know what I'm getting and this is cool. And I'm open to that. Yeah. Because of, okay. uh, because of the, uh, how it introduced it. it, it introduced you to the pathway of this is where they are now. The Autobots won. The Decepticons are salty. As a result of it, instead of calling themselves Decepticons, they're called Preds or Predacons. Right. And there's a and there's a hint of, uh, of of that you know how people hate Nazis. They carry that stigma, even though some of them felt that it was wrong. And then introduced uh, of more of a three dimensional thinking as to how that when be, winning a war would evolve the species or make certain people evolve to other things. So uh, the guy who played uh, the character that was uh, Megatron. At least his uh, his incarnation of being Megatron felt they were they were wronged in in you know the spoilers you know how like uh, in World War II of how Germany basically mm-hmm. is is put under the thumb of the world mm-hmm. and okay. that's how he felt so it, it, for <laughs> in a weird sense he was their Hitler in which right. he went all out f this I, I'm I'm taking my resources and we're gonna make us great again so they're the real victims. Yes. Yeah, but that's a, but that's a twist to it. Right. But it created an understanding for the character to push it forward. And the more you watch the the more it gave you tidbits of generation 1 transforms. Not 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 enough to take over the story, but just enough to like, wait a minute. Are they throwing it back to it? Until one grand episode they do by introducing a beloved character ravaged, but not as a as a panther as a damn near ninja like figure, yeah, yeah, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, 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 real right. cassette, but it was, it was, it was like a ninja with a panther head. It was like, what the hell is this? Okay. <laughs> but, it, but it's, but it, it's somebody who gave homage to the original Megatron. It's like you know Megatron, and he spat on him as saying that you're just using his name. Till he found out that he actually had a plan. Then he turned on the Maximals or the Autobots, changed everything. Then by the by the end of the third season, you see the arc. So then it tells you how this incarnation affects the one we previously saw. And then I was sold 100% because mm-hmm. they they used the old idea, pushed it forward 100 years, and it's like, here's what happened. Because right. we never really get a definitive ending for Transformers. For all you okay. know, they just fight. And what does that even mean? Mm-hmm. You know, what, what happens to the villains at the end? What happens to the, the, the losers of a... Of a centuries old battle right you know it's it's that type of understanding right but it gets more uh it gets a, a three-dimensional appeal to it but unfortunately due to the look of it and what you didn't embrace yeah it was never fully accepted so they they step over that concept yeah 120 I mean, to me the 84 stuff you know like jazz is the porsche or whatever he was like <laughs> there were still stories to tell for that like that that didn't 
that never wrapped up. No, it didn't. For me. Okay. You know, you could have rebooted that with the same characters and I would have gone to that much more easily, you know. But I just want to add it. You ever heard of the character Black Arachnia? Yeah. That came from Beast Wars. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm not saying it doesn't contribute. Like, like yeah. I'm for Beast Wars now. Yeah. Now. But I'm talking like, you know, however old I was, you know, 12 year old, 12 year old Zach was, you know, why are they, why are they doing it this way? Like, I, I rejected it because it wasn't the thing that I liked, you know. I did the same thing. Yeah. I didn't, I wouldn't I didn't bother with it. Yeah. Because I was like, well, they're they're what now? They're they're like yeah. you said, and, I, and, I right. and what? we missed out. It sounds right. like we missed out. Sure. And, um but sometimes like I I wish I knew when like when executives have sort of that idea that like we're we're dusting off this old thing. Right. And we're gonna give you this thing that's nothing at all like the old thing that we're mm-hmm. dusting off. Like, you know, it's the same in name only. And and like I said, and sometimes that's awesome. Sometimes that's exactly what they need. Daredevil, Battlestar Galactica. Yeah. Like, so we get a muscular reboot that's kind of better than what we've had. And other times... We get Denny O'Neill Wonder Woman. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> where, where, in a leisure suit. Yes. Yeah. yes. With, with I Ching traveling around and doing basically her best... Yeah. Uh, was it from the Avengers, yeah. the TV show, the British one? Her best Emma Peel, Emma Peel. Emma right. Peel impression. As opposed to being from them is scared for all from Paradise Island and having all her powers. Yeah, we get Frank Miller's spirit. Yeah. Uh, right? Oh. Like oh. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. The spirit was was such a bad choice to make in the first place. Because I don't really think there's a baseline or a, a bedrock of people who knew what the spirit was. No, I don't Yeah, I mean I remember hearing that like they got Frank Miller to direct the spirit. They got the guy from Sin City to direct the spirit. Of course, what they wanted was Sin City. Mm -hmm. And I get that, right? Right. Right. I think that was a case of them wanting another Sin City and Frank being like, well, I like the spirit, so I'm going to make the spirit. And and, and, and they were close. And they were close. I do know that. Like, you know, Mm -hmm. he he regards Eisner Eisner as as a mentor of his. I Mm -hmm. get that. But I don't think that that was a version of the character anybody wanted. And and that's like Batman and Superman and Spider-Man's and all those, they will be rebooted perennially. Right. Mm-hmm. Like they're, they're, we don't foresee any instance where they're going to go away. But the thing that's heartbreaking for me about the spirit was I feel that that was the franchise's only chance. Yes. Right. Absolutely. And I feel like for these lesser known, when you when you start to get to the bottom of the barrel, right, like it's going to be years before somebody does Lone Ranger again. It's going to be years before yep. somebody does Green Hornet outside or- of comics. We'll get that stuff in comics, I'm mm-hmm. sure. And we never got the Brad Bird spirit. Right, which oh, you can oh, find oh, the right, uh, right. animated clips from online, Jeez. the test footage. Yeah, <laughs> could have been great. Wow. Could have been great. It always, to me, like the tone of the spirit to me was always like Indiana Jones meets Catch Me If You Can. Mm-hmm. Right, like, it, but like, it, has anyone actually seen a spirit movie? I have. Have you? I saw it in the theater. Really? Yeah, my wow. roommate. How'd my you room, do that? My roommate at the time was like, "Hey, I'm going <laughs> to the movies. I think I'm going to go see the spirit movie." I said, "Okay." He's like, you want to go? I'm like, nah, I'll buy your ticket. Okay. Right. So I went to go see it and it was abysmal. <laughs> like it was awful. It's there's, there's exactly one scene in it that reads like the spirit and the rest of it is just like, what the hell is this? Right. The yeah. only description it to it was Samuel Jackson dressed as a Nazi. Yep. There's that too. You get Great that cast. Too. Great yeah. cast. Top well, to bottom. Yeah. Top to bottom. But yeah, it's just, there's one, one particular scene. That's it. That's all that reads like the spirit. Otherwise it's No. Right, <laughs> you know, I mean, but then again, when you have was it was it San Diego where Frank was like, we're going to a very dark place, people. Yeah, and you knew full well yeah. from that just that description that Frank didn't really want to make the spirit. I agree, right there. That that's what I knew. I'm like, oh, not for me. Yeah, not for me. Yeah, and you know, but I think I think reboots become a buzzword mm-hmm. also, and and I, like I know a lot of people, not at this table, other people that just hear reboot and 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 there's like, no, I'm out, I'm out, and I'm like, sometimes you need one. Sure. Sometimes you're not good. You're like you've run out of direction to go with the with the version we've had. A prime example of that is Spider Man, Homecoming. I had to convince people to see that. And yeah, then yeah. and then there's Spider Verse. Remember? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Homecoming was a weird one because it was just it was the it was the second reboot within, God, I don't know, ten years. And so I think people, I, I think people thought they were a little bit fatigued from Spider Man, and then little did they know, like, oh wait, no, like we got this reboot that everybody likes, and we kind of like better. Yeah, and, everybody was saying when Andrew Garfield Spider Man came around, like, isn't this too soon for a reboot? Mm-hmm. This is too soon. 
And then that one ends and we get the MCU one with Tom Holland and everyone's like, I love it. It's great. Like yeah. it's, it's not too soon. And mm-hmm. the time gap is probably about the same, if not even shorter between Amazing Spider-Man 2 and, and Homecoming or his appearance in Civil War first and Homecoming. Right. Yeah. And I mean, so like it, it depends. It de- like, I mean, I'm not saying that like Batman triumphant or whatever the fifth one was supposed to be called it. Right. That, <laughs> right. Had, that was supposed to have the Scarecrow, like Jeff Goldblum playing the Scarecrow and Jenny McCarthy playing Harley, Harley Quinn, and there were rumors to have Vince pieces of it got put in Batman right. Begins, and then and then they were supposed to have Jack Nicholson coming back as the Joker for like Fear Toxin. Like I'm not saying that like you could have gone someplace else, sure, but did anybody like would we take that over Batman Begins? Saying it out loud, like I kind of wish we did get it, <laughs> now, but. But uh, like I'm not willing to trade Batman Begins for that. No, not at right. All. No, no, of course not. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't think that's a With, without Batman getting a reboot, we never get Heath Ledger as the Joker. True, true. Right. That's kind of unanimously like everybody. So I, I we think, never get I, Bean's funny voice. I think people yeah. hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I think people hate it like as as the default reaction until they're pointed out like, oh wait, no, I did like that one. Mm-hmm. And I did like that. You know, all right. Which takes me back, because I made a list okay, go ahead. of the good ones, and the not-so-good ones, and then a couple ugly ones. All right. Okay. What you got? And so on my good ones, we talked about some of these already. Battlestar Galactica. Mm-hmm. Batman Begins. MCU Spider-Man. MCU Hulk. Mm, yeah, when he know. changed from, you know, the Ang Lee mm-hmm. Hulk to the Ed Norton, and then kind of again right. to the Avengers sure. version. I've got TMNT, the... 2004 was it 2004 animated movie no 2007 no, the cgi the 2007 animated. cg we'll animated movies yeah. it's a good one uh, it's awesome i love it and then again to the nickelodeon 2012 mm-hmm. series which is great i would even argue 84 to the to the 87 series so the comic to right the to, the, to the mirage to, to the first animated i would say that that's even kind of call it whatever you want right. reboot or a poor adaptation or or whatever but mm. it's not the same right, right. <laughs> Another one on here I've got is the first Abrams Star Trek, the okay. 2009. And then one of my favorites, and again, this is it's the, the gray area of what's a reboot, what's a prequel, what's a remake. But I've got Rise of the Planet of the Apes okay. because I love the Planet of the Apes, the new Planet of the Apes movies. Yeah, I can't All three of them it. are fantastic. I just I just taped War for the Planet of the Apes yesterday. <laughs> oh, like, so I can I can finally watch the whole trilogy. I'm super yeah. excited about it. It's great. Yeah. But I, I mean, I, I'll say for myself, when Battlestar Galactica, the first one came out back in the 70s, I never watched it. It was <laughs> it was conveniently dismissed out of hand as being a poor, a poor Star Wars ripoff. Yeah. I was a Buck Rogers kid. Oh, yeah. I love Buck <laughs> Rogers. Buck Rogers. I'd love to do a show about Buck Rogers. But yes. yeah, I, I watched Buck Rogers ad nauseum, but um, Battlestar Galactica wouldn't touch it. And then it was just because people in the shop were telling me how good the reboot was that I went in and watched the reboot and they were right. It was awesome. Love the, the reboot. But the, the original I had, you know, it was on in the background at people's right. homes. Like we, I never watched it personally, but I know I have friends of mine who would put it on and be like, hey, it's about Star Galactica. I'm like, I have Star Wars. Yeah. Why, would I, <laughs> why would I want to watch about Star Galactica? The one I'm going to throw out, like Clifton, like k- kind of in the vein of what you're talking about is Creed. Creed is a the weird. Band? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love it. <laughs> Sorry. I would sing, but I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to trouble anybody <laughs> with that. But no, Creed, the the, the, the Rocky. Oh, like yeah. it, it's a weird reboot, sequel, you know, remake, mm-hmm. <laughs> like all in one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's great. Mm-hmm. You know, that was one I didn't realize I wanted, but but I got, but I'm like, oh, okay, I'll go, I'll go around with this. <laughs> Clifton, continue with your list. Uh, well, that was all I had for the uh, for the good ones that I was thinking of. For not so good, I've got yeah, after yeah. the success of Let's rip stuff apart. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is this isn't in the worst. This is in my mid level. Okay, I'm like yeah. And after the success of Battlestar Galactica, they went to Ron Moore to be like, "What else can you revive from the '70s for us?" And that's when we got Bionic Woman on oh. NBC. Oh, oh, I forgot all about that one. Yeah, <laughs> very very short lived. Forget who the actress was. Who played Michelle? Lucy Hale's in that. Lucy right? Hale's the younger yeah. sister in it. Um, Michelle, somebody. Yeah, the British actress. British actress. Um, John Blank underneath. But it, my thing about that was is that <sighs> watching the pilot, it was the idea that they introduced. I mean, if anyone's you, I know Tommy has. 
but in it's like introducing they introduce faith before they introduce buffy mm -hmm. so faith is much uh, the, and that's the reference i would give is that they introduce uh katie sackoff's character as a bionic woman before they introduce the bionic woman mm -hmm. and her character from the jump is infinitely more interesting than, <laughs> okay. than than the bionic woman interesting yeah so it's like why would you you know you basically played your card ahead of time you should have played and built up your other characters like you know when there's nothing to con con contrast it against you're like well why aren't we watching katie sackoff's story as opposed to michelle ryan there you it's go michelle ryan <laughs> it's it's michelle ryan's story it's like no no the katie sackoff yeah. stuff is way more interesting i'd like to follow her instead <laughs> it's just like I have a boyfriend and he may be working for an oh, and then it's a car accident. Now she's a bionic woman. Right. <laughs> and it wasn't anywhere near as cool as what was going on with Katie Sackhoff. And another not so good one is the recent Hellboy movie. Oh, um, yeah. With David Harbour. It is on uh, HBO this next month. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. circulating. You can catch it on, on your premium channels Look, now. Looking forward, to, looking forward to checking it out. I mean, the sad <laughs> part with that, though, is that, like, I mean, people were clinging so much to Ron Perlman. And, I, and, and he was the first name that people were like, well, okay, yeah. No, I can see that. Like, if I'm not getting Ron Perlman, I'll take that guy. That would yeah, be great. Har yeah. no, David no, Harbour yeah. is not the problem. No, 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 no. I, I wouldn't no. think he's, he is. He's but. a great choice. It's just, I mean, I, you know, I've, I've, I haven't seen it yet, so I can't really comment. But being a Hellboy mark for the longest time that I was, and yeah. enjoying the first two movies, and the animated is Perlman too, right? Oh yeah, Perlman does the voices yeah. for that as well as uh, David Hyde Pierce. Mm -hmm. No, is it, is who, did, uh, who did who did Doug, is it Doug Jones? Doug Jones it is Doug Jones, but it, it was David Hyde Pierce in the first, in the first one, one, I'm pretty sure. And then yeah. it's uh, Selma Blair, right? Yeah. yeah. As Liz. So they do the voice in the I mean, they're they're good. It's good that the stuff that stuff was good. And I think a lot of people are like, no, Pearl <laughs> is yeah. you know, he's Hellboy. Yeah. You know, so I think that was a lot of like backlash well, I against think that. What, what doesn't what, what hurt it too is that like you had Hellboy made by quite possibly the most gifted like filmmaker in a generation and then you get and then who who even directed the new one i cannot recall okay yeah, yeah we'll find that's out. my point like, <laughs> sorry yeah. to that guy but right. you know what i mean right. i'm sure he's good but i mean del toro i mean guillermo del toro like i mean he won an oscar after the fact sure oh yeah right? no i mean even if you don't like the lost army it's right. a beautiful film to look at there's yeah. a lot of really cool stuff in it the golden oh i'm sorry golden, golden. golden army my bad. yeah sorry golden army but I mean, so there's a whole lot of stuff that's really cool in it to look at. Right. More than just Ron Perlman missing from um, Hellboy. It was, it, it, for me, listening to the reviews on how it was conducted and what they tried to pull from the comic, it was piecemeal. It wasn't a direct story. They included too many things. Mind you, I've not seen the movie, so mm -hmm. I'm only doing it based on the reviews of what I've heard on um, podcasts. Yeah, okay. I did see it. I did see it in theaters. I was uh, okay, interested so. to check it out. And yeah, there's things that are comic accurate. Like, I mean, there's moments in it that I was like, yeah, like that, like that nails something. And then other times where I'm just like, this just doesn't feel right. And that happened too often. It was uh, Neil Marshall was oh. the director of this one screenplay by andrew cosby but yeah that's just i'm sure yeah. they know him in his house <laughs> right yeah. You know? yeah i don't i don't i don't don't no, not it's not del toro yeah. so i mean so but one of the common threads i i think we're seeing is that there's a reboot that is rejected as something that is it, it, uh, it doesn't capture something that we initially loved about mm -hmm. so is there any instance where you can think of where like i really love this thing Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And now they're making it again and it's completely different, but I still like that thing, the new one. I'm just saying thing a lot. Right. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm still just, trying to think of yeah, one. I'm yeah. trying to think yeah. of one because I'm, I'm sure I have. Right. Like I'm positive I have and I'm just trying to blank at the moment. I'll say, so Clifton, you brought it up. I'll, oh. I'll say 2012 Ninja Turtles. Okay. okay. Like, which, I mean, I love kind of all of those inst instances, but. That was a fun uh, blend of the 80s series and a little bit of the Mirage comics and, you know, and also like contributing and adding stuff in and of it, like on, on its own. And and I thought like at the end, like looking back at it, I'm like, wow, that was actually like a really good series. And I thought that really had some fun. But that said, I, I didn't I wasn't rejecting it outright that they were doing it. I was mm. excited that they were doing it. What do you think of DuckTales? Ah, uh, DuckTales is a fun because like I didn't yeah. watch the original that much, you know. Yeah, I no, wasn't a Disney Afternoon kid. I was a Fox kid. I watched Bobby's role. But they're, they're, I'm, I'm sort of <laughs> they're rebooting that. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know if they are. Uh, yeah, I'm just kidding. Just Howie Mandel. So. Is Howie Mandel doing it? No, they're doing. Different, oh no, different, I'm, I'm out. I'm out. It's, it's a different Bobby. Yeah, but no, DuckTales is a Bobby De Niro. 
<laughs> doesn't Bobby Duck- Moynihan? Yeah, exactly. lost. Yeah. Right. <laughs> The doesn't, same height. Yeah. Doesn't DuckTales answer your question from earlier as far as um, they put more love and care into this version of it that I don't think was really needed? I mean, from, okay. the, from the from the celebrity actors to the inclusion of the comic book. But I was going to say, the, I'm going to throw a wrench in what you're saying. Isn't, then, the, isn't the first cartoon a reboot, though? No, because I only say that because we never had that in that form, mm-hmm. DuckTales. As far, it, to me, it was Scrooge McDuck animated mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. i don't think I, is there any disney cartoon or even short with scrooge mcduck as a prominent character doing stuff because the comic book makes his own well, book the book. comic books did it was so ducktales is kind of a hobbled together mickey's christmas carol <laughs> yeah <laughs> but he played scrooge, literally <laughs> scrooge, <laughs> yeah, I know, but, two on the nose right yeah right but, but but i don't see it as a reboot because we've never had them in comic book form um, well, I mean, they did the adventures, that... like Don Don Rosa and mm-hmm. I mean, uh, Carl Barks. Yes, they, like I mean, did write those adventures with those characters. I meant cartoon, right? It had not, it had <laughs> yeah, not yeah. been previously adapted. But is yes, it, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know enough about those those comics. Is it primarily Scrooge by himself, or is it like the set of? The, is it pretty much Ducktales? They like, oh, we can lift this from the, from the comics and put it right in. The... A lot of it is Scrooge with other people. Okay. Okay. Like I know, like Magic and a Spell, and yeah. like yeah. and uh, Flint Heart, and I've been uh, looking that stuff. Glam Gold. Yeah, yeah, if Glam you Gold. ever see that at a convention, mm-hmm. let me know. Sure. Yeah, I've actually been looking for that. So that's that's a hard thing to find these days. But I think I think when you say they here's here's my what, thing I meant to bring up earlier was when you say they put more love and attention into the second one, right? Because obviously they don't have the first the first episode the first series only have the comics to refer to, but they didn't have an animated series to refer to. Yeah, I think a lot of times with reboots. A lot of the issue is giving you enough of stuff that you like and without and, and covering a lot of the ground that you've already been over, which like basically is fan service. Mm-hmm. Right. And then trying to give you stuff that's not new enough or that's going to basically rankle you. So you're like, oh, this isn't what I know. This isn't yeah. what I like. So or about the character, or about the series, whatever. And I think that's one of the things where we, you know, that happens more often than not. And I don't know if that's just from from our perception or that's one of those things where it's carefully thought out that they don't want to go too far outside of what the box of what quote unquote, like with DuckTales. I mean, DuckTales from the beginning, what I've seen is pretty, pretty reminiscent of the stuff that we watched. You don't think so? It is not. I'm just saying up until the point, I mean, granted there's a continuity that goes along. I'm just saying the idea of it's the nephews and the and Scrooge and they're out doing stuff. Yeah. But I think they give just because of now Mm -hmm. it's just not, uh, uh, point A to point B, okay. like the original was. I mean, it's now, more sophisticated storytelling yes, now, but yes, I mean, the, the pieces are all there. Yeah. They're just arranging them differently. The only, well, yeah. the only reason why I, I, I'm saying it's not because, uh, mind you, I haven't watched four, four seasons of it or, uh, or complete seasons of it, but the one that gave me pause to say, okay, they're doing something definitely tremendously more than what I grew up watching because I've seen every episode of the original mm-hmm. uh, was the, uh, the Darkwing Duck one. Right. That one? You, Tommy, you and I actually, I, this is refreshing my memory. We had a thing going where I was going to give you five episodes of DuckTales to watch to yeah. try and win you over. And you were going to give me Justice League action. Yes. Yes. <laughs> win me over. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We still yes. got to do this. We still have to do it. We still got to do that. But my brother, who uh, likes the new reboot, mm-hmm. pushed me on that one. And I have to admit, I like what they did. They, did you see that? I'm one? Talking about Ducktales. Yeah, the one where yeah, they, yeah. what they, what they reimagined Darkwing. Yeah, the way they do that. Mm-hmm. Nice. But what, I, what I'm saying is, if you go back again, this is something we don't every, that doesn't really happen anymore with with animated shows is where you're given Monday through Friday one continuous story, <laughs> and you better be you know your butt better be on the carpet at three thirty or four th- four o'clock to watch. I mean that doesn't happen. Kids don't have that experience anymore because you can binge stuff and blah 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 blah. blah. It's all on YouTube. Get off yes. my lawn. Yes. Get off my lawn. But <laughs> it's it's the I mean, but that I mean, I when I say that DuckTales is similar to that, if you look at like the first five episodes of DuckTales, that's one big adventure, right? It's the movie, you know, right? right? Yeah, you yeah. Just mm-hmm. chop it up. Mm-hmm. But it's one of those things where I think that's the one thing I like about the newer DuckTales is the idea that that sort of is like their blueprint and they don't stop. There isn't like one and dones really. There are yes, it's right. serial, but it moves along. The story is moved. Yeah. You know, they're moving that goalpost and trying and to move I, that I just story think along. that's the nature of, of TV and media now, where, like, everything is serialized. I mean, the sitcoms are serialized now mm-hmm. more yeah. than, you know, there's, Ever no, before. there's no Magnum P.I. where, <laughs> where I mean, 
the reason I bring him up is Magnum P.I. is a character that's frozen in time, essentially. Like, he is the same every single episode. Like, yeah. we got the character at this point, and that's when we meet him, and every episode, he's the same. Yeah. Like, sitcoms today are not even done that well, way. Well, it, it's been, it's funny that you mentioned that. For example, like, they did, they did the movie Shooter mm. with Mark Wahlberg, right? Yes. Yeah. And the Stephen Hunter book? The right? Stephen Hunter books. Yeah. I've read most of them. And they they basically it's set you know it's set an earlier time, and basically they try to make it so it's more contemporary and instead of being Vietnam it's the Gulf mm-hmm. and the Gulf War and it doesn't work. Sure, that, that basically, trick that they do for everything. They right, just move it, they just move it to the next one. Right, they just yeah. move the, the, the time period. It really doesn't work because so much of what happens in the earlier books turns on what happened to 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 Bob in in. Bob Swagger in those in Vietnam that they really can't do it. Well, they, they again they did the same thing when they did the USA show. Mm. Again, a reboot of the movie of the book, <laughs> right? <laughs> and again, they try to make it more contemporary with uh, I can't remember who it was, Philippi Ryan Philippi. That's it, Ryan yeah. Philippi. And again, it doesn't work because in the books he's you know he's like my dad's age, right. <laughs> you know, and in yeah. Ryan Philippi obviously is not my father's age, and it's not it's not. But the main thing is the fact that they just decided, you know, in their stepping along with the reboot, the well, we can fix this by instead of doing a time period piece, they decided we'll just move, we'll move the time period along. Whereas in like Happen Leonard, when they did an adaptation of that, I know we're getting away from from reboots, Hmm. but at least they try to set it within the time period that the books take place. Which is the 80s. Yeah. Okay. So there's stuff that that goes on that you can basically refer to and play with that's not, I mean, it's contemporary, but at the same time, it's not contemporary because it's not taking place now. It's kind of, it's. I haven't seen it yet, but it's kind of like the Bumblebee movie, which Mm. which looked like finally the Transformers movie that I wanted to see. (laughs) It is very fun. Okay. It it is a lot of fun movie. But yeah, it's one of those ones where I say it a prequel. Is it a reboot? Yeah. Like I hope it's a reboot. I hope they just start making more <laughs> right. in well, I mean, that in that flavor. It was. I mean, it was difficult to not go see it when you see the sides of like the like the bits of we talked about it. The bits of like Cybertron and yeah. like characters that we you know from the eighties. Yes, what well, we f. It was that trailer. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it, was, it, was, oh, yeah. it was it was completely uh, um, planned out to have that trailer come out to show that stuff because yeah. I don't think anybody really cared that that movie no. was happening and then the second you saw Shockwave oh, you're like what? Oh. wait what <laughs> yeah, standing right. on Cybertron yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah totally agree yeah I still gotta see it yeah <laughs> I haven't seen it either may it rest yeah. in peace <laughs> <laughs> they, they've, they've lost any account to get my money by the what third one yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, this one's good. This one's good. No, I don't. I don't. <laughs> it's not. It's not done by Bay. It's so. a good actress, Haley Steinfeld. Good no. soundtrack. That's what makes it even harder to watch <laughs> because it's at the tail end of the whole um, need to revisit the Transformer <laughs> universe in a cinematic setting. Gotcha. Can you imagine after well, how, what's this number five or six? Uh, I can't even keep sure. track. Yeah, but that's yeah. the absurdity of it. Six, I think. Right. It ends on that note. Well, you yeah, know, when you bring in Marky Mark. Well, <laughs> yeah, the cinematic genius. Yes, yes. yes. No. So, yeah. uh, uh, off topic, but have they signed Steinfeld for for Hawkeye, Hawkeye? Kate Bishop? I've not heard. I know okay. it was the rumor. I, the rumor was they wanted her. To be great. Uh, I don't had never heard if it was ever definite okay. or not, or you know, if her schedule allowed. Mm. But she would be great in that. Yeah. So I hope that happens. Hope so too. Yeah. <laughs> she would be great in that. Yeah. No. So, do we have any ideas for like? A reboot of a reboot that we think should be rebooted. I do, or like, <laughs> or um, a three boot, as we call it. So, yeah. so is it like, what what would we do as a three boot? I have a three boot that everyone here is dying for. Okay, oh, okay. Fantastic Four in the MCU. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I'm in. <laughs> so piggyback on that. Yeah. X Men, and and yeah. subsequently yeah. X Men yeah, in yeah, the MCU. Yeah. No, you're 100 percent correct. But that will only be a reboot, not a three boot. Yeah. Well. Kind of. They've kind of rebooted themselves along the way. Yeah, I mean, there's not a hard and fast rule for this stuff. I mean, that's the confusing part because I'll, you know, really quick, I'll bring up like Jurassic World and X-Men First Class. I mean, they're yes. all kind of no, yeah. hard reboots and soft reboots and remakes and prequels, <laughs> like, and, prequels and, and remakes. Yeah. Well, this is not necessarily a, a three boot, but it's Suicide Squad. I'm so interested in seeing him, uh, his take mm, on Ostrander's yeah. run. And, the James uh, Gunn version, the James of, Gunn version of it. I, have to, I mean, it wasn't the thing. That, I mean, I don't think any of us was asking for it, but 
it's kind of like that Christmas present that someone laid on your doorstep to sure. see yep. if you'd enjoy it, you know? Sure. I can't wait for both of those. Yeah. I really can't. <laughs> mm-hmm. I want Galactus in there, and I can't <laughs> wait. I, I want Mole Man. Yeah. 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 And the subterranean I creatures. I cannot wait to see James Gunn Suicide Squad also. I want Terex. That's what I want. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, I want Terex in a Fantastic oh, Four movie. That's be so awesome. Yeah, that's what I want. I want Terex the Tamer. Yep. Thing. Oh, just seeing Thing in there, like standing with Hulk. Yeah, versus Hulk fight. Yeah, he's so important too. I mean, like I, I do God. regard Thing as sort of like one of those heart and soul characters of mm-hmm. of the Marvel universe, yeah, of and so like I, I, I can't wait for mm-hmm. them to bring him on board. Yep. Yeah. Did you hear that? Speaking, of, did you see that rumor? It was out there today that at one point. When they were doing that interconnected universe between Deadpool and the X Men and mm-hmm. Fantastic, that terrible Fantastic Four movie, that at one point De- uh, Ben Grimm was supposed to be in Deadpool too. Oh, really? There's a draft of that. I didn't know that. Uh, <laughs> Chickless? Michael Chickless? I don't know if there's a No, there's no, no, like no, the no. Colossus. The terrible, thing. the terrible one. The, the, the one. 2015 version. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. Uh, Jamie Bell. Yeah, oh. isn't that Jamie Bell? Yes. 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 Okay. You know, the one that, the one that had the It's Clavering Time was, was when my brother was beating me up. Got it. Okay. That terrible. Yeah, terrible I'm happy movie. we didn't. No, I, it's a shame because that cast was so good. Like the cast is. is good actors. Yeah, so. it is. They just had shit to work with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so Clifton with Fantastic Four. Mm-hmm. Tommy says James yeah. Gunn Suicide Squad. Or even that, just X Men, because yeah, there would be like okay. a, a what, quadruple. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm excited for. I mean, as much as I don't think again, much of the, that, that camp can't seem to land an ending. I'm excited for Abrams to do Superman. Okay. I think it'll be good. The first one will be good. <laughs> I think the first one will be good, and then, and then there won't be much of an ending. Or Abram's good at starting a fire. I don't even know what you're talking about. Oh, the, the, Is he doing it? At one point, there was, there was, there's been talk oh. of Abrams getting control of the... Abrams and Gunn basically being their Feige. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, no. And getting... Abrams, in, really? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And Abrams be possibly time. being... Yeah, you need Gunn. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, no, absolutely. Especially by the Spider-Man stuff that's coming out, you know. Yeah, but they couldn't pay Abrams enough to be Feige. There's well, no, no, no I don't think. I don't think. I just think it's more along the lines of they're going to give it to them as like, hey guys, give us an outline of what you think the next five, ten years of DC movies should be. I like Abrams. Fine. I, I think he's going to get bored. Like, I think he's got too much of a wandering eye. I don't think he would Could give be. it the love that, I, that it, again. That it I think needs. the first one will be good. Yeah, he'll be all. He, he do Cloverfield. This is. It. <laughs> I do. I do hope. That uh, as much as I hate Man of Steel, I, I hope that Henry Cavill sticks around because he would be such he's such a good Superman with better material. They're going to they're going right. to start scratch, start from yeah. scratch with the understanding that Cavill they're gonna, is, what they're going to reboot. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But with the understanding that Cavill existed, I'm sure there's 20 other people who would be able to do the role just as well. Don't be surprised if this Matt Reeves Batman and this new Suicide Squad is like the breaking point of the stuff they just did with Snyder. Neat. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Don't Me, get me wrong. I'm I all, can't wait. No, no, I'm, full, I'm all for it. You know for while I am. Yeah, I'm just saying. You can mix Shazam in there. Yeah. Like easily oh, enough. Yeah. I love yeah. Shazam. And, and Aquaman. Did you, yeah. see, did you see Shazam? I movie? did see Shazam. What do yeah. you think? I love it. It's on HBO. I, I love it. it. It's, it's, you haven't seen it yet? No. Okay. It's coming up. It's like I just saw the It's That and uh, Hellboy and uh, Us. Those are the big three that so I'm going to watch. That, yeah. Is that your three boot? What? The Abrams Superman? Yeah. Yeah, I'll go with that. Okay. That's what I'm going to. So, okay, so I really quick, I did think of one that I fought, a reboot that I fought, mm-hmm. tooth and nail. And then when I saw it, I was like, oh man, okay, I love this. G.I. Joe Renegades. Yeah, that was a good one. That was, that was a really good one. That was a really good one. I, like, you know, kind of A team y <laughs> with the oh, opening much, and everything. Yeah, this is the one, so. this is the one that was on uh, the hub back when that was a channel. Um, <laughs> It, yeah, kind, it, it got overshadowed mm-hmm. by the Transformers Prime show that was on at the same time. G.I. Joe Renegades was great. Really, really great. For my three boot, though, I'm going to say Thundercats because I I think it's an awesome property. I think it's got a lot of potential, but I think the reboot that they did in, what, 2011, I think it had so much potential and just like and, and the story just wasn't wasn't there. I think it fell short. Your idea of Thundercats for maybe revisit He-Man because uh, that would be, what, fourth? If not, if you want to do the space one. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or we're getting one, though. <laughs> yeah. It's Smith, getting, that's Smith. what I'm saying, but it's coming. Yeah. It's yeah. coming. I mean, the second one's not bad. Have you ever watched that one? Which one is the second? The one, one that was on Cartoon Network. Is that the second or the third one? Well, if you're, if you're counting Space He Man, then I'd say it's probably the third one. Yeah. No, that was great. Yeah. No, I like that one quite a bit. 
Mm. Yeah. Do we have a final thought on reboots? Close us out. Sure. Oh, uh, you want me to um, interject? Did we, did, did, did we bring you around? Well, yeah. Are they not all bad now? No, or? Yeah, you're right. They're not all bad. Uh, <laughs> Do you like more than you realized? I would like a lot more than I realized. Um, only the simple notion of, I guess, a lot of my hatred stems from a younger age, I guess, as to not understanding what I saw. But uh, thinking about the reboots that I did enjoy, it, it's nice to uh, consider the ones that I do like are the ones that are more well thought out than the ones that are spurred at the moment based upon um, just to keep the uh, franchise going, so to speak, or maybe even control of the franchise as from a movie perspective. Yeah. yeah, no, reboots are fine. It's just it's just who takes who's the caretaker, basically, with it yeah. all ends up being. I agree. Like, As always, it depends who, who's doing it. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll concede, I think, that they may be they might push that button too often. I think I think I think that some things don't quite need to be all torn down that you can still play within that world. But yeah, they're not all bad. I don't think. No, but there's some of this is horrific. And those yeah. just leave it's just like anything else. You, you eat burnt food. You'll you'll, <laughs> you'll that's the taste that's going to long your mouth as opposed to the one that has a great <laughs> taste, so to speak. On that note, mm-hmm. uh, for Frank and Tommy and Clifton and I'm Zach. Thanks for listening, everybody. Mm